Hi everyone and welcome to this part two of building skins for VR and uh, yeah let's let's dive in okay so last time round um, what we showed was using Chrome because um, Chrome's got this uh, cool little plugin um, immersive web emulator and that's exactly what it allows you to do so um, if you're developing for the quest or, or a headset I think this is more more geared up for the quest but what you can do is go into tools developer tools and then you can select um, web xr and then you end up in this scenario here where you can turn on and off various things and you know to do the headset and whatnot so these were one of the tools that we'll probably be using um if anything goes wrong um because we are trying to cast out to um, the uh, Oculus to, uh, to, 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 to Chrome and we're also recording and we're on Zoom and so there's lots of potential for anything to go belly up as it were. If it does, we'll be reverting back to this, but just to let you know, but yeah, this is actually quite cool. It can set up for the Rift and the Quest and you know, you can double click and, and, and move around. We we'll, probably will use this later on, but wherever possible, I'm gonna show in the Quest. Right, okay, so that said, um, one of the things that we got a little bit of feedback from our last one, because we dived straight, he went straight to skins, and bang, 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 bang. And uh, some of the new people to Pano 2 VR said, well, how do you get into VR mode? So we thought, ah, we should have really started there. So this is what we're gonna do. So the skin that we, uh, this is the normal um, uh, tour skin. So if you open this up, you've got the all the bits and pieces that build a skin. Not gonna go into any of this because we've got lots of videos on how to build a skin. Um, but what I will do is in the components toolbox, I added a, a category. Um, now we're gonna share this as well, so you'll be able to download this um, with all of these components in. And one of the components is an enter VR button. Okay, so there it is. Um, let's just have a look at its action. Um, basically, it's a button with a background and the action for it is nice and simple. Mouse click, you get the options here for the source, uh, for, for the action. And then the type is, um, obviously it's an enter, for, uh, enter full screen stroke VR button and we just select the enter VR action. So that's our button done and dusted and we're ready to use it. Or are we? That's the question. Um, if I were trying to use this now to get into a VR experience, this would fall foul of a little checkbox. And that little checkbox is once you select the output all over here and under the VR tab, there is this enabled. Now, what happens here is that um, before Pano 2 VR will allow you to enter VR and all that, you've got to tell it that you're going to do it. And the reason why this is unchecked is because when you check this and create an output, we end up putting some extra supporting files in the output folder. If you're not having VR, then there's no point in having them. So if we open up this folder, you'll see that I've got the WebXR folder here and we've got a VR skin and all of that sort of stuff. Um, if you're, you know, this obviously adds to size and if you've not got a VR output, then no point having those files. So that's what that checkbox does. Now, without this, you won't get certain files and without these certain files, then the enter VR button won't work or won't show or whatever. So it's important that once you've added your enter VR button um, in the skin, make sure that this checkbox is checked so you can use it. Okay, so that's that. So, right. Now, the other thing we need to talk about as well is HTTPS. <clears throat> what is this? Well, back in the good old days, we used to have HTTP, colon, forward slash, forward slash. What WebXR needs is a secure connection. So that's HTTPS. Now, Pano 2 VR has a built-in web server um, that allows you to view your outputs locally. Okay, cool. By default, that's HTTP. What you'll need to do is if you want to start viewing and looking at um, WebXR uh, projects is to change this. Now, with Pano 2 VR open, I can click on uh, Pano 2 VR preferences and we can go to web server. And this is the, roughly, this is the uh, default setting. It will say automatic in these two boxes, but um, 
Basically, what this is saying is that one, use the integrated web server. Yes, we do. When we click, we see it. Use only local ho host. Now, we want to disable that because what that means is when you open it up, only you can see it in your project. If you wanted to, say, connect an iPhone or an iPad to it and want to see and view the output on these, then you need to disable that. Now, to activate HTTPS, it's this little checkbox here. And as I said before, the ports will be set to automatic. I, I changed this to 8000 and 8001, so I know that they're a fixed port number, which helps me out when I'm typing this in, um, in say, a, a browser, because if it's set to automatic, every time you start a new project, the port number will change. Okay, so that's the only reason why we do that. So that's now turning on HTTPS in Palo 2 VR. If we go to Tools and Integrated um, Web Server, you'll see that there is um, not a lot going on. So let's do that. Click on the reset. That was due to my power cut. So just restart the server. And you can see now that I've got under HTTP, which is the top one, is the 8000. And underneath it now, we've got HTTPS, which is this second one, which is 8001. OK, so that's that's now setting up for um, uh, a secure uh, connection. OK, so that's within Pano 2 VR. All right. Um, what we want to look at now, though, is um, looking at how we can get because obviously this is this is the the, the, the the two in the project and and we will be working with this. But what I want to do is show you a nice little trick, um, which actually Thomas um, our CEO showed me, uh, which was how to use a, a QR code um, to put it on your phone to put it and then uh, uh, to open an output and then share it on your iPhone into the Oculus app to show it in the Oculus browser. Um, sounds like we're piggybacking a lot of things together. Now, what I'd like to do is give this a go so you guys can see it. So I'm going to change to the oculus um, website and i'm going to try and fire up if i can the the headset so what i need to do um is and that my oculus is just saying it's got no connection which it was true because we had the power cut so if i now try and share this let's see what's happening it says it's casting right so do you guys see anything you do right okay cool so that's what that looks like i'm going to put that to one side for the moment all right now what i'm going to do is i want you to see my iphone so i'm going to go to applications and we're going to go to here right i know this opens up this screen but don't worry about it i'm going to close that and let's do that again so quick time i'm going to new monitor uh hang on where did that go that's gone right. yeah that don't help is it <laughs> right okay hey right we got it here we okay go. yep that looks good okay oh um so there's the browser i need to get back into this right but what i also want to do as well is open up the project that we're going to look at so what i was going to do so this is the project i've opened up pano 2 vr and so this is, if you like, a way of getting into the Oculus browser without having to type anything. So I'm just going to go to the cloud. Um, he says, open this up. And what I'm going to do here is, is a little tip. If you right button click on the green connection icon and select known cloud account, it actually selects the account, if you've got multiple accounts, where this project is sitting, which is here. So I'm going to right button click and click share. And I've now got my QR code all right cool so this is my phone and what I want to do now is find the oculus browser there all right so let's just get back into this now this reckoned hang on let's just um, refresh this and get back in it is worth waiting for. <laughs> I know you're probably thinking, just get on with it. Right, so do you see me? Yes, you do. Right, okay. So the phone's gone to sleep, which need to juggle lots of things. Right, so I'm now going to, right, with the... Oh, come on. 
open up the phone with the camera icon. I'm going to look at the QR code, tap QR code. My phone now shows the VR project I want to show. I can now tap the share button on the phone and one of the share items is the MetaQuest icon. If, you, if it's not there for you, you can use the more key to select it and add it to this. But you collect this and it says open now. So I'm going to click open now and then it's going to ask me which device because I actually have an Oculus Go and the, and the Quest. So I'm going to select Quest. Whilst it's doing that, let's have a look at the... Uh, come on. And there you go. It's just, sorry, I was a bit too late, but it opened it up in the quest for me. There you go. So there it is. There's the, there's the project. So basically what we've done with this is opened up Pano 2 VR, gone to the share, had a look at the QR code, um, used the camera app in the QR code, shared it with the Oculus app, and the Oculus app opens it into the headset. That saves you typing lots and lots of text and addresses. So that's, whew, I'm glad we got that in the end, but that was um, sharing um, the uh, VR experience in the Oculus Quest. Right, now before it gives me any more grief, I'm going to disconnect my phone. Right, okay. Ah, right, and breathe. <laughs> um, I that take it we haven't got any actually, questions, do we? Sorry? No, we don't have any questions yet, but that was a, that's a, a really, really useful, especially if you're <laughs> like us and we're constantly testing things <laughs> and we need to come in and out of, um, yeah, desktop and, and uh, headsets. And so, right. I think it was okay. It. But that was, yeah, no, it's, yeah, thanks for that. But that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that little bit of encouragement. I needed that after this. I'm still, I'm still shaking like a leaf after the power cut because I tell you what, when you've got three minutes to start casting and, and everything just goes, boo, <laughs> it's, it's not great. Anyway, um, not going to harp on that anymore. Uh, right, so that's basically how we do that. So you can even download here, obviously, with our GNOME Cloud, you can download the QR code as well and just use that on your desktop or whatever, you know, if you've got flyers or whatever. But anyway, so that's... Um, that's the cloud and 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 working and when we just export there's the oh what one's this right so there's the there's the output and yeah this is all good right um last last time then what we did um as i said what we needed to do with because we've added our button now we've selected the chat box to say right this is what we've got and our skin last time looked like this, he says. If you look, we had um, we added a couple of sounds and we added a node hotspot and whatnot. So let's let's open this up in Chrome. Uh, let's do the keyboard shortcut to get us into the Web in VR experience and uh, Web in VR. So now we're here. I can go into the Web VR experience and then you can see these. Let's just zoom in and double click. So it's a handset. So here you can see I can move a wand around. See that? And also what you can use is the keyboard left and right keys to do the nudging. You know Pano 2 VR allows you to use the um, joystick to nudge around rather than move your head. Um, so that's that's quite good as well for the keyboard. Of course you can double click. Let's just double click in the head here and then move this around like you would. Now, the good thing is if I move up, you can see that we get the cursor come here. So um, I'll explain about that in a second, but you can see you do get your menu option when you look up. So yeah, let's um, get rid of that, he says, and activate this one. And we can, if we hover over a, a point hotspot, you see we, we made that and we can, um, let's just go over here and we you can use the controls to open and close the pop-ups right so that's as far as we got last time now um, what I'd like to do is just expand on this skin now before I do um, we didn't say it enough last time and we certainly won't see it say it enough this time either and that is 
The two skins are separate. You want to build one for your normal VR output or, or your tour, yeah? Uh, but the actual VR or WebXR output, the skin has to be, you know, it has to follow different rules. Um, uh, uh, so therefore you need to think that they are completely separate. Um, however, they do share one common factor and the common factor is a variable. Um, because basically how it works is if you add a variable to the normal skin and you add a variable to the VR skin, then um, whatever skin you're in and you change that state, the next one will work. So I want to prove this point by what I'm going to do is we're going to go into the components toolbox. We're going to go into here and we are going to um, have a toggle, 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 toggle hotspots button. There it is. Now, what this does is when we added this, it adds a variable called vizskin, which just so happens that the um, the normal output has a variable called vizskin. And what this button is doing is toggling it. Okay. Now, for this to work, what I need to do is add um, a visible logic block to the hotspots, all right? So basically I'm just gonna add variables viz skin. If that equals false, then that will be false. And we're going to have the hotspots show. Right, okay, so that's basically the hotspots are showing. Um, the variable, it's, its default is true. And what we're saying here is, is that if the skin is false then the hotspots will hide and that's what this button will do all right um, so here it is so mouse click set variable value the viz skin and we're gonna this is the not so it's basically toggling so if it's true when we click it it'll go to false and it'll come back to true it's a toggle all right okay so with that all done what we can do he says um can we can we can we let me go back to the quest i'm going to try this it has it was reliable to the point of the power cut so let's just see if i can do this again and you can see it because i'd rather you see it in the skin as it were so karen can you sit, see if you can can you tell me if i'm casting yeah we see we see what you're seeing right okay so let's go to the um right so let's go to what i need to do is upload this to the cloud. Um, boom, done. Okay, because the quest is actually, if you look, um, hang on, can you see? No, you can't. Right, okay. uh, no, you have to bring uh, Chrome <laughs> yeah, forward. Yeah, 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 I see, I see, okay. I see. Right, goofing out, don't worry. Right, um, so let's just let's go full screen with that. That might help as well. Okay, so if you can see at the top here, it's we're at the V2. So what I'm gonna do is just clear the browser and just give it a refresh. Right, so this is the project. Um, we're gonna enter into the VR experience. Come on, you can do it. Here we go. Now, that button we've just added, all right, where is it? Can't see it. Why can't we see it? Well, because it's a skin element. And as I said before, what we kept repeating last week, and we will keep repeating Slow this week. your movement, week, Martin. Sorry. Slow your movement. It's really pixelated. Right. Okay. Um, is that all skin elements, apart from point hotspots, are hidden by default. When you look up, you see the menu icon. And when you click it, you'll see my button appear because the button is in the skin. If I hide the the skin it's gone now you've got this button when you look up or you can use the button on your controller um, with the oculus you've got a little button that you can toggle it with as well okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click this button and that can now hide and show let's um the hotspots right um as you can see it's hiding and showing these hotspots right so i'm going to select to hide them and now what I'm going to do is come out of the immersive experience because that's the that's some more buzzwords there. The immersive experience. I'm in the headset and I'm looking at the browser. 
This is not the immersive, uh, the immersive experience. This is the experience that you've got if you were to look at your computer screen. You only hit the immersive experience when you enter WebXR and your your viewpoint is from inside looking, you know, inside looking at the room. Okay, but you'll notice that my hotspots are still missing. So what's happening here is any variable that you're going to be changing in the in the normal skin. So if I bring them back. Now, when we left VR, they were all hidden. So technically now, if I click to enter back into VR and go into the immersive experience, um, all things being equal, my hotspots are back. Here we go. So that's just a, a little thing there to show that you can, you know, have um, uh, variables that, um, that work both with the real world and the virtual world let's see i think that's a good way of explaining that so the, the real world and the virtual world so things like you know like hiding hotspots as an example okay so what i'm going to do is just bomb out of this and I, I want to continue building this skin up to where we had um uh, or where we said we were going to do so what i want to do here is gain go to the components um i want to add uh, information hotspot now this is going to be quite cool um, because of the text box. Now what we're going to do here as well is also give this the same variable. So if the viz skin is false, this will hide. Because if we don't do that, when we hide all of the hotspots, um, this one won't hide. So that's why it needs the variable. And I'm just going to drag that down to keep it all nice and tidy. So let's just see what this looks like. Um, so let's just upload this to the cloud and you can see how quick this is boom done um i'm just now going to go back to the oculus so I'm, I'm here let's just come out of the experience i just want to refresh it um so let's quit i think what i will do because i've experienced this is actually just clear the browser cache of the oculus and refresh okay um, and then you can see in the normal skin we've got these information hotspots we just didn't have them in the VR skin so now when we enter the VR skin he says here are our two new hotspots now what's cool about these is if you activate it it opens and I've made it work with the um, uh, the sounds the skin sounds so you you get a f you know a funky noise when it opens and shuts but with um you can't click and drag but what we have done is we've got a paging effect in the scroll uh scroll bar background so anything um so more than 50 percent of the scroll bar if you click it it pages it down and again at the top so if you're 50 percent over or under rather you page to the top so we've now got you can have as much text as you want in a text box and you can yeah it all it all just works yeah it's just all good so that's the paging um paging point hotspots right okay so what else do i want to add to this skin um well let's just hide these because i don't want those in the view i'm just going to go back to the um components toolbox i'm just going to add a few more things here actually i'm going to add an an exit vr button all right, and then I'm going to, uh, so I've got my toggle button, exit VR button, and I'm gonna add this node menu. All right, now, they are probably the last things I'm going to add to my uh, to my VR skin. Now, the menu, um, am I gonna go into how, we, how I built this? Not really, on the understanding that all the menu was, so if I close this and save that, all the menu was is if I just went into the to the Venice skin, opened it up, copied this. Uh, now, the key part of here is if you look, we've got our node cloner and and how we set up a menu normally. Again, you want to know how to do that. We've got loads of information about building menus. But what's special about this is it pages, and the length of it is determined by the uh, by the uh, container. So here. In this particular scenario, because I've only got so many nodes, you wouldn't see any paging buttons because th the nodes would fit in here. OK, it would fit in the menu. So all because it's a text menu, you'd see all the different nodes. So what I did for the webinar was rebuilt it, but I made it shorter. So you can't see all the nodes 
in the uh, in the menu and so that, that allows me to use these up and down arrows or the paging buttons now what I also did to make it look good or look different um, was just literally select the button here would be the original button and I just used the components toolbox and selected a new graphic and changed it and I did that for the both of them and finally just to make it look a little bit different I, I went into the text box and I restyled some of the colors and that's all there was to it to make this menu okay so that was that now the only other thing I did want to show quickly is we've added an exit VR button all right so here we got mouse click exit VR it's very similar to mouse click enter VR of the of the normal skin uh, or in the real world but in this skin we're exiting out so let's just see the result of all of this so let's just upload this to the cloud whilst that's uploading to the cloud Karen do we have any questions I know we don't have any questions but a while ago um, uh, someone just made a comment that if you don't have uh, you know if you don't have our cloud service that's okay you can use any QR code in that trick um, to uh, open up the the uh, the URL in oculus app. yeah absolutely absolutely yeah so it can be you know it's not just our QR code you can use any QR code and they also mentioned that there are um, uh, Chrome extensions for or other I assume Chrome extensions that will uh, do this for you so um, whoever wrote that it's, it says it's anonymous but whoever wrote that and if you know of any good um, extensions let, you know let us know anything that helps yeah, absolutely <laughs> absolutely right okay so um, we've um, added to the skin we've uploaded to our cloud the only reason why I'm uploading to the cloud is because it's just easier to do and once like in the oculus quest because um, as I say we're cast into chrome and we're doing lots of crazy things in a webinar um, which has the potential of everything falling over so this is why we're trying to make everything as as easy as possible for all the hardware but anyway so I'm going back to the oh, quest let's grab my handset so let's just come out again now I'm going to come on you can do it right so let's go to quit because I've changed quite a lot I'm going to clear the browser data again clear the data and refresh so again this is all on the cloud cloud hosting so um, right wait for it to dry right okay dry wait yeah, for it just to load. maybe wait for it to settle down is it right okay it is seems it to get really pixelated when you first start right. in there and then it chills out after a while is it okay now can I carry on did you, do you reckon I've got to wait a bit because mm. I can't see because I'm in a headset <laughs> it's getting it's slowly getting better <laughs> yeah good. give it a try right okay so let's enter VR mode now then and let's see what we've got right so we've got our hotspots oh, that looks great right so we've got our hotspots and you can see that all working cool now when I press or look up and see the menu as we said anything we add to the skin you only see it when you select the menu and when we select the menu there it is we've got our there's our menu and we've got some up and down these are the paging buttons here we go all right and then we've got this exit VR button so click that now when we exit VR before it says are you sure do you want to blah 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 but our button is really cool because when you click it boom you're straight out no questions asked you just you're straight out but what this does allow you to do is you can open a map and select a new location because that's the other thing is as well whatever location you're in in a multi node tour when you go back into VR um, you will be in that location so you know when you look at you know um, massive tours with hundreds of nodes and you know or thousands of nodes in different locations where you know a menu list like this just isn't practical because there's thousands then that's another way of doing it you can just select the button you know out you come find the um, 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 uh, open the map in the in, in the real world select your location and then pop back in into VR and that's just a, a nice little way of doing that all right so I'm just gonna pop back out and let's just have a look at my list of things to do right so that actually covers virtually everything I wanted um, I don't know if anybody else but 
one of the things that I've got to cover um, is, you know, when you're building skins, you know, what works, what doesn't work? Well, um, CSS and HTML doesn't work. Um, the, we, you know, the, the team has done a, an amazing job to make this look transparent. So when we add things to the skin, uh, it just looks like it works and it looks like it's working the same as, as a normal skin. The actual reality is it doesn't. There's a lot happening in the background. So basically, um, things that won't work. Well, with videos, we can have URL video and a local MPEG-4, but because of, you know, um, uh, but, but we can't have, say, YouTube or Vimeo videos because that's HTML and, and, it's, and it just doesn't work. And it's the same with the PDF element. The PDF element will not work either uh, because we're dragging that in. Um, other things that won't work, the scroll area because of CSS, the scroll bar, um, or oh, sorry, the uh, seek bar, and of course, Lottie animations. There are other things that don't work, um, um, but um, we will list these on the website. Now, what I do want to show you um, is, uh, let's, 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 let's do this. All right, let's close all this down. I think I'm sort of coming to the end of this now, but what I do want to show you is if we go to our website and we go to our product, Pano 2 VR page, and I'm going to curse all the way down to our examples. And one of the examples is stereo. Boom, there it is. Now, the thing with stereo is you can't consume this without a headset. So this is another, you know, big thing. You know, you, you need stereo. If you're going to view stereo, you need headsets and you need, you know, a way of getting into it. Now you can see because of the, this Chrome browser with all its um, technical bits and bobs, you've got this enter VR button here. But what I'm going to do is first take the headset off because it's hurting me. There we go. I'll give it back to George. Um, and what I'm going to do is keyboard shortcut to get into the web mode. Right. Okay. So we we'll just refresh that then. So straightens it all up. So this is the this is the real world. And what we're going to do then is enter the web world. All right. And then I can use this button to come back out again. Right. Okay. Now one of the things I've got to mention is this polyfill. Now you see this is lit up blue, polyfill. Um, I can't remember if I've mentioned this already. Um, I don't think I did, but Karen, do you, do, do, do you remember me mentioning this? I've got it written on my list further up, but I don't think I covered it. Well, if you covered it last time? Or have or... I covered it at all this time? I don't think I have. No, not yet. This is this is new to Right, today. okay, cool. Right, okay, I, just, I, I had it on my list and I've, and I've jumped <laughs> over it, that's all. <laughs> yep. So it's just like, hmm. But this is too important not to cover. Right, okay. Things you need to know, um, because all of this was a big old learning curve for me as well. Um, headsets support WebXR, right? Um, as far as um, uh, we were talking, um, Android supports WebXR, but iPhones don't. So you have to have a thing called a polyfill, right? And hence its name, fill, polyfill. It fills the gap between the iPhone and WebXR or, or the technologies needed. So you, you, so you need this polyfill. And because Chrome is actually a desktop browser and desktop browsers don't normally have polyfill, um, this does allow me to show you something um, about um, the, the skins. Um, now let's head back he says back to the project okay because this is the prime time to do this is if we look at this right you'll see that this button is permanently visible always visible right because there it is but I only actually want to show you this button if you're on a device that can actually use VR because there's no point having a button that if you're on a desktop browser and it doesn't really support it so what you can do is deselect the visibility, then go into the logic block, and then say, if VR is available, all right, show the button. Okay, so that's now true, and we can, boom, do an output, and then we get our button. Now the reason why I can see that is because of this Chrome browser, and we can, and it's got all this polyfill log, all right, but. Um, We've just gone to our own website. This is a stereo uh, panorama, and 
because polyfill is active, we can see this button because this button has exactly the same actions of what we've just done. So if I turn off polyfill, you'll see that the button disappears. I can still see the hotspots, but I can no longer get into VR um, because this browser doesn't support WebXR and it hasn't got polyfill, which is like, you know, um, I think Firefox or even the Chrome browser without this plugin. All right. So if we turn polyfill back on, that is saying that VR is now available and the logic blocks are now saying, oh, VR is available on this device. I will show this button. All right. So that's a that's a great little thing to, to, to show. And again, the Chrome browser is a good way of, of doing that, of explaining and showing this. Is it available? Yes or no. OK, the other thing I want to do is go into it. And because we said about stereo, well, we've got a stereo button here and even though this isn't a function of Pano 2 VR, Pano 2 VR can obviously take in stereo images. Um, we can have you know, VR strips or, you know, um, uh, uh, two rectangulars, left over right, right over left, blah, blah, blah. We can accept stereo images. But if you want to test if you're actually doing stereo, if you click the stereo button, it splits the screen. And yeah, you can see, um, if we double click and move this around, you can see if I get to the edge of, say, this um, uh, arch, on this side, you'll see that the the views are different. Um, so yeah, you're seeing a bigger gap this side than that side. So you are seeing a stereo pair. So it's just a quite a nice little way of of making sure that your stereo is physically functioning. Right. Okay. What's the time like? Um, actually, we've shot round on this. Um, I'm going to put it out to um, to Karen. Karen, is is there? Anything else that I should be covered? I don't think, I think I've covered everything I need to cover. Um, I think so. There, there are a few questions. Should we? Yeah, no, no, let's do it. I mean, I've, I've been, I've been okay. working on the understanding that we haven't had any, but go on if we've got yeah. some. <laughs> no, I just, well, um, I wanted to uh, first say that um, Anonymous, thank you. Um, if you. If you guys are interested, uh, they posted in the Q&A, tab a few links to those extensions that will um, open the links into uh, our uh, QR, QR code links. And yeah, so there's that. And Martin um, was asking that, or was stating that he tried this trick here to turn the polyfill off, um, uh, but the button was still showing on mobile. And he was wondering, how, you know, how do you show the button only on a headset, not just on, on mobile? And um, I have an answer here from our Thomas. And he says that we, we're going to add this option um, in the future to disable the polyfill. But for right now, you do it, the, I guess, the old fashioned way where you add um, iOS, you know, say, don't show if on iOS or yeah, I guess it's, in this if case we, it's like a, an action filter where you say yeah so you know, what show we it could unless do it's here, iOS if it's available and um, advanced uh, operating system uh, and not so if it's not iOS and VR is available show it but if it is iOS it won't show and you could also add one for fire uh, for Android there as well yeah so that would operating system uh android okay so it'd be looking something like that so if vr is available but it's not ios and not an android you'll see the button yeah, yeah. that's uh i think that's the uh you know martin says thanks and you know he's like oh more logic rules and i think that's it <laughs> you know when in doubt See if you can do it in the logic block, I guess. Yeah. Um, and for the, we have another question. Anonymous asks, if WebXR doesn't use HTML and CSS, what does it use to create the immersive experience? Uh, that's a good question. That is a very uh, good question and not one I can answer because it's no magic. <laughs> no, yeah, no it, um, we're using uh, uh, 3JS. And so that's the magic. Oh, right? 3GS. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But, um, and yeah, 
Uh, oh, and Thomas reminds us, don't remove Android because uh, when you're doing this because uh, Oculus is running Android. So if you do that, you won't see it. Uh, okay. Yep. Good Good call, Thomas. Thanks. Yeah, good one. <laughs> That's saved about so do 50 that. Yeah. support emails. That is. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, at least you can block, I don't know, iOS then. So, yeah, if yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but how would you do that then on Android? I guess you really need that 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 future yeah, feature to um, turn off yeah, the polyfill. Yeah, we're right. sort of hitting the limits here. What we can actually physically do here. So, operating system. I suppose on browser. Would you do browser? No. Well, I don't know. Could you do browser? Just add all those. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but but I can't I can't remember if these were like. Would it work with Chrome on iOS and Chrome on the desktop as well? Is it is it is the user agent going to report back the same? I don't know. Does 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 any of the team know? Is, is anyone back there going to sort of <laughs> chime in? I'm, I'm waiting. I I I see uh, answers coming. Right, okay. Oculus uses Chrome, so oh, and I yeah. And WebXR is native in Android, so in that case, it's... Yeah, don't. All right, so, yeah, it's as much as we'd like to try and solve that problem here right now today, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can get close. We can stop iPhones. And iPhones, I say, are probably, you know, um, with the regards to this polyfill, I mean, iPhones are probably the most problematic, um, you know, because that's another thing. And it's another good thing as well is, you know, things that sometimes things just don't work well. All right. And it could very well be that, you know, it's a, something we've got to implement in the future. But this polyfill, this is a, you know, it's a Google project. And, you know, and a lot of it is down to that. So, you know, we're at their beck and call with, say, the iPhone. You know, if someone says, well, my skin's not operating very well on the iPhone. Well, it's chances are it's this polyfill and unfortunately the google project that's i say out of our hands i think we can contribute to it a little bit on github but you know do 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 they keep it up to date yes no you know but that's just out of our hands but this is the polyfill thing and as i say you know android as far as i know is native uh, web xr the headsets are native web xr web xr so the polyfill the fill is only being used on ios hopefully in the future ios supports it but who knows but for now it's polyfill and yeah and i think yeah that was um anonymous brought up the same thought as as i was thinking when you were saying that and they're asking you know is it better to develop for uh, google cardboard as opposed to oculus at this point and i would say the exact opposite is true Mm. or would be because um for instance you can try right now um our projects you know on google cardboard and they're not gonna look really nice they're not uh well they look okay but there are features that aren't going to work and that's mainly because cardboard's dead they haven't uh developed it or updated it since when like uh, yeah a long time they haven't done anything i think since 2018 or something um and yeah so consider google cardboard dead unfortunately um because but and there, you know, there's not much we can do when things aren't going right um, with that. It's the same same problem, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's funny enough. Um, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you a little story because earlier on today, I got a phone call. And it was, "Hi, this is um, this is Apple, and this is a, this is your Apple manager, and blah 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 blah." And we've got um, you know uh, we've got some new products coming through, and blah blah blah, and whatnot. And are you interested? And did you want to purchase anything? I thought, hang on a second, no. <laughs> Hold up, um, but I got into a conversation with him about the, you know, the 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 uh, support in in the iPhone because you know Android supports it, and and in and, and you know you can see our skins in the Android in the cardboard. Um, I'm not saying everyone should go out and do it, but it does work. But you get a very lesser experience with iOS because they're holding back, and it just seems. It just seems that, you know, we just need that push for, 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 for Apple just to say, look, okay, you know, we're obviously investing time and money into the new headset. So 
let's bring that out to a wider audience to the phone. Or it could very well be they're thinking, well, I've got a headset, why bother with the phone? I have got no idea. And I think as a, uh, I mean, uh, that's my own personal, you know, my own personal feeling is I've got no idea what they're doing and I don't think they have for the minute. But, you know, hopefully um, in the future, iOS may support it, who knows? But at the moment, bridging the gap or filling that gap is the polyfill, and which is, as, as Karen's just explained, it's a Google project and Google haven't touched it for a very long time. So, yeah, oh, bit, yeah, cardboard. Not, yeah. not the polyfill, but the, yeah. Yeah, the, the cardboard. But, that's, but, but, yeah. but, 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 but that is the polyfill though, right? Isn't it? The, 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 the WebXR polyfill is the Google project. Is that not? I could be wrong. And the the cardboard is Google, which is dead. And yeah, yeah. but the polyfill, I'm not, I'm actually not quite sure where the polyfill comes from. Maybe, thought, maybe Thomas thought, can, yeah. can back that up. But you know, there's always, yeah, it is Google. Okay. And, uh, but the, um, you know, there's Vision Pro out on the horizon over there. You can buy that yeah. one, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, yeah. um, there are a few more questions I want to get to. Yeah. Um, Martin's asking um, about, I, I think, Martin, are you wondering about where the um, uh, the elements that our Martin has created to create the VR um, skin? We'll add them. We'll, we'll add, add them, them to, to the download. Yep. We'll have um, a, a little package for you to download yeah, um, I, on, I, our, on the webinar website. I created this folder. Here it is. There, there are all the components I used. All right. And just because I can, really, I opened up the components toolbox, um, open the category, any category in uh, the Mac, and then just copied that folder into the skins components categories. There it is. And when you restart the skin and open it back up, you'll see it as a category with those in there. So you can either double click and add them one at a time, or you can just add the complete folder and have a web VR components folder or VR webinar. No, you probably want to rename that. But anyway, that's how I did it. And, but, but they will be, um, attached to the download. Um, we'll try and, um, I say try, what we will do is package all of the files that you see here and have it as a, as a download uh, attached to the, um, uh, video page, um, our webinar video page. Um, so you can play to your heart's content. Maybe we can also embed this project on that page as well, so you can just quick. So you see, have a quick reference that what what we've done, and then and yeah, absolutely. use yeah. that cool, to test cool, it. Cool, yeah. cool. And then um, Martin's also asking or uh, asking about the menu that you created, and uh, that we're not going to go uh, deeper into that. Not today. Uh, and yes, there are videos and stuff for explaining that. But I think what I would do is check out the Venus uh, skin or even the yeah, skin yeah. That, that Martin's got yeah. here. Just I check mean, out what he's done and everything is there. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. what I do. I always just look at his stuff and see what's, what's going on and then I get an idea of, of, how, of how it's working. And I think that's the best explainer. Well, basically, yeah. you know, as I said before, all I did was just copy this and paste it in and just modify it. Um, as I said before, with these buttons, you select a button click on the components toolbox and just change the button. You know, if I change it to the clock, it's done, you know? So I've now got a clock as an up button. You, and you just go in and just style, just change colors. You know, I can go for a red one. Here we go. And all of a sudden you're changing this very, very quickly. Um, the thing with this um, is that it's it's got a couple of unique actions in here that we need to work on. Um, don't want to go into it in any great depth at the moment. There's no point because we will be at, we will be addressing this and having proper actions. Um, but at the moment, we've just had to you know um, 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 use our own, if you like, internal actions to get it all going. But but that is it. All you've got to do is just copy and paste with the uh, Venice skin. Um, that's that's got a text menu with the feather skin feather VR that's actually got a thumbnail menu. So again, you just copy and paste that and it's the same deal. It's, um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a container that's restricting the size of what you're seeing. Uh, you've got the two buttons either side and you can, you know, you can change the color of text boxes and do all sorts. So basically, as Karen just says, if you want a menu, copy and paste this. As long as you don't start changing the actions, then there's no reasons why it won't work successfully in your own projects. 
Um, but yeah, it's uh, those. So the feather skin gives you a, a thumbnail menu, and the and the Venice skin gives you a text menu. Just copy and paste that. That's all I did. Yeah, and that's what I usually do too, and just re restyle it. And the other thing too is because these are these are designed, you know, by designers, and we've you know kind of tested what they're how they're working in VR. You know, we've already created that that design aspect already, and you don't have to think about it. So, yeah. All right, so let's see, we've got some more things. Oh, no, okay, Anas was just helping out Martin there, that's cool. Um, but maybe for other people listening, uh, so Martin was asking, you know, how to, um, how to uh, turn off uh, Enter VR for mobile only, and anon the anonymous here was saying, you can try to check the user agent string for the Oculus browser and or mobile VR. And with a little bit of JavaScript, you can and, um, to identify that on the Oculus headset against phones and tablets. So if that means anything to you, or you know that what that means, there's a, there's a tip for you. Thank you for that. Right, um, okay, speaking yeah. of tips, mm -hmm. something I was gonna show and I didn't and, and, and I'm kicking myself now. I'm wondering if I got time to show it now. Um, it's oh, I just wanted to click in because I just saw that Martin had like he he understands the styling. He was just w wondering about the content of the buttons. You know, how does that content come in for the buttons for and, and the menu buttons? Ah, right. That's the that's that's our workaround that we've got to make proper actions for. Uh, we're, 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 we're 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 actually just using bits of JavaScript at the moment. We're not JavaScript, but we're just using bits of code at the moment to to trigger these things. Um, but we're going to have proper actions. It's it's just something that, you know, it's working and we've had other things to do. Um, but whilst that works, it's fine. But it, we do need to refine it. Um, right. Um, one of the things to say, one of the things I did want to show um, is if I create an output, right, um, and we have a look at the output folder. Now, this was pretty cool. And I thought, because I've not, I don't think I've ever showed this. And I think I want to. So here you can see we've got the images on the VR, we've got the WebXR um, folder here, and we've got the VR skin and all that sort of stuff. So if I disable that, right? Now, what I would say to someone is if you disable that, what you can do is click the bin button and basically re-output again, and it'll re-output it without those files. But what I wanted to show is that our bin button, or trash can, or dustbin, or whatever you want to call it, has this little gray down arrow. And that little gray down arrow means that you click and press and hold, it, it gives you a, a context menu. So you click and hold, and it says arrange, uh, arrange output folder, but keep tiles. So if I say yes to that, you'll see that it all disappears apart from the tiles folder. Now, why do I want to bring, because this is just a little tip, nothing to do with VR, but it's just a little tip. It's, is if you've got a massive project and you want to clear out the folder, like you clear out the output, because you've done lots of changes and you only want the files that you're going to be having for that particular project. If you just click the trash can button, it deletes everything. But if you click and hold and then delete, but leaving the tiles folder, because the tiles folder represents all of the files. It represents all of your input images. So now creating an output, all right, I've, I've obviously deselect enabled VR and you can now see that we've got less files. Uh, the VR content files are gone. And this is why this is deselected. Because it came up, it was, well, why isn't this selected all the time? Why have I got to do this? Because it represents file size. So if you've not got a VR project, you can see we've only got a few tiles, uh, so files. If I select it and then export again, you'll see that, oh, if it weren't for the browser, you'll see that we've now got all these files, which represents file size that, you know, if you've got a project that you don't, want to have vr on and you'll just have files that you really don't need but the but but what i wanted to show you was this click and hold the trash can button probably really irrelevant for vr but i just thought it was just something really cool if you've got a large project this is a godsend you know so you don't have to sit there and 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 you know remap and redo all of the input images you just can just flash out all the other files and leave your images anyway sorry about that i did but i just thought that would be a good tip to add to the back no, that's a great tip. It's always a nice reminder because I know I forget about it too. And you just, if you just want to clear everything out and let's start over. There we go. And it's a nice tip. 
and I forget about it myself. Um, I think uh, that's that's it. There's if there aren't any more questions, I think we're done here. All right. If we're done, we'll I'll, I'll I'll leave you with this one little reminder. If you're not seeing your VR button, make sure you're on HTTPS. Make sure you've got VR enabled, and uh, what else? What else? What else would stop you from seeing a and VR button? And you've added a skin. Oh, and you've added a skin, and you've added it to the skin. Absolutely. Yeah, and add, like not only just added it to the VR skin, but you've added a VR skin. Absolutely. Uh, I've, I've forgotten that a few times. Yeah. Right. Okay. But <laughs> oh, yeah, but... Um, Martin has a quick question. Does a Pi export um, also improve the VR images? Um, Divided by pi, I don't know. Well, divide pi pi gives you more pixels per cube face. So, in that yeah. respect, yes. But then, we are, our multi resolution is is trying to fit to the size of the viewer. So, um, I know, I know some people in the past have just said, "Oh, yeah, no, just use fourteen forty or whatever, and you know, just have the maximum cube face size for oh for my headset." But then somebody down the road might have a different headset with a different resolution. So this is why we've tried to stay with uh, multi-resolution on the VR output because it doesn't matter what headset you're going to do or what headset you've got. We're going to try and offer you the best resolution within reason. Um, you know, obviously we can't get to the exact pixel count, but you know, within res we, 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 you know, with within certain goalposts, we are we will try and provide the best resolution for your headset, knowing that they're not all the same resolutions. So this is where multi-res comes into it. But you know, but you don't have to. I mean, if if you're targeting just say I don't know, an, a, a Vive or something, and and you know it's resolution, and everyone's going to be using the same headset, then you can just go to the image settings um, and. Uh, deselect multi-res, go to single res and set up your, the cube face sizes so you'll have the best possible cubes for that but as not everyone's going to be having the same headset and not every headset is the same resolution, we still think multi-resolution is your best option at this time and just to add um Oh, and Thomas has weighed in. He says VR Tour Viewer has direct access to the graphic card, so it can have a higher resolution. So if you're using VR Tour Viewer, is that right? There's more coming. I, I wanted to also say what, uh, in case you didn't know, uh, Martin is ex um, referring to uh, you can choose if you want to divide by four, divide by pi in the settings. You can set that for your cube face sizes. Let's have a look, shall we? So let's do. Preferences, images. Did you have more to say, Thomas? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, it's in advanced. Here we go. Um, use width. So on the output, blah, blah, blah. Use width, divide by pi. I don't have it selected because I try and keep my Pano 2 VR as close to default values as possible for helping people. But yeah, if I was going to, if I want to squeeze a few more pixels out of it, you can select that. And that's under okay. Settings, Preferences, Advanced. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm done anyway. Yeah. Uh, um, right. Okay. And for those of you, th uh, thanks for uh, writing in questions to the um, poll that I that we sent out. And uh, hope we answered your questions there. So, very good. And, yeah. <laughs> Okay, everyone. Well, as I say, thank you for joining us today. And from me, anyway, I wish you farewell until the next time with our next webinar, TBA. <laughs> yeah. And yes, we don't know when, uh, but I know when the next workshop is going to be. Ah, good call. <laughs> good call. Like this. <laughs> the next workshop isn't going to be a webinar it's going to be in person and it's going to be in rome uh in october i uh, we've been posting um check our blog uh page there's a, a link there to this uh to the 360 event and there's a lot of great talks going on it looks like and um thomas will be giving a talk and martin will be giving a workshop so um yeah I think uh, I think Martin's going. The other Martin, yeah, Martin's going there. So, 
Um, awesome. I hope to see uh, some some other faces. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, that's it for me. Unless there's anything else I'm missing, no. No. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's <laughs> okay. time to sign off. So from me, I will say ta-da until next time. Okay. Thank you. Bye.